You can see I have some nasty sludge built up on top of the jake brakes and yuck. So this stuff needs to come out and it needs to be cleaned up. So let's see, the jakes have to come off, wires have to come off, the rocker assembly needs to come up, I have to pull all six injectors, and uh, I pull this assembly off right here. I have to get to the back of the cylinder head and disconnect the uh, 90 degree uh, pressure valve, check valve on the back, disconnect that, because that's held on by a fuel line. It all has to come off, and I don't know what to expect. So I have done a check with the computer, and the number two cylinder was the one making the steam mist. So when I disabled number two, it no longer did that, and the engine was running without puffing steam. So, you know, I'm almost 100% sure the number two cylinder has sunk in the block. Hopefully, it did not sink too deep. So, this, this really is, the dice are rolling, parts are expensive, but you know what? This broken Freightliner is really not worth that much right now in this trucking recession. There's just something about this truck, you know, it being my first rig uh, that I owned, so it is definitely a project. Uh, before she broke, I was trying to test paint out matching colors on the door. I was going to paint the dash a different color. I did the floor very good. I mean, it's completely sealed off at all the seams and completely waterproof. It's a real tough floor. It's not real wood. Uh, some kind of like synthetic stuff but this stuff has been through a lot of abuse many many years and the only thing it really gets is scratched up you can even uh recode it with uh polyurethane that's what it said uh in the uh, instructions on the box so this surface could actually uh bond to polyurethane so if you wanted to you could shine the floor right up so that's it my you know here she is. I'll show you around real quick. I ripped out all the other interior inside uh, the rig because these old freight shakers usually leak water up around these seams. So this was all redone. This is like really like thick insulation. It's over two inches thick all around. And I have insulation even under, uh, I like the bed doesn't fold up anymore. And I have two inches of insulation on this side and on the top. And I mean, this thing can really keep uh, much cooler in the summertime for its color. And in the wintertime, oh my God, it can it can trap heat in there. But if you don't run the heat overnight, uh, you can wake up in this thing and it can be like a cooler icebox. So it might be 20 degrees in here and all your water bottles are frozen. But outside, it's already 35 degrees. This thing can stay cold in the winter if you don't give it heat. So let me come down here. And give you a better view and I just it's just a project truck I have painted all this stuff here and I like this I feel like it's giving me a lot more space so uh, so if I can revive this truck and bring it back from the dead uh, I'll be very happy um, it's got the clear dome uh, fuel filter this was replaced the power steering box was replaced it has a new radiator uh, it has a new uh, air, newer air compressor pump on it I have a larger uh, engine dampener from a 14 liter Detroit engine, uh, replace fan belts, replace fan clutch, newer fuel pump, newer ECM, uh, brand new starter motor. And I don't know if you can really tell from here, but it's brand spanking new. I put that starter motor in uh, a couple months ago. Okay, yeah, the valve assembly for the air brakes and everything under the uh, coolant reservoir that's replaced. It practically has a brand new uh, Borg Werner K31 turbo on it. It has a PDI exhaust manifold on it. The water pump has been replaced not too recently. The air conditioner blows very cold and it's very reliable. A lot of stuff. This uh, auxiliary gear assembly in the front, this was like 550 bucks replaced. The tent center, about 140 bucks replaced. This truck was very reliable until it dropped the liner. So let's get cracking. Here we go. All right, I'll climb up here and show you what I have going on. I've pulled all three Jake brakes out. All right, inspecting the cam and the valve train assembly, everything looks really good. So everything's clean, not rusted. So there was some sludge on top of the Jake brakes, but uh, a little sludge in here, but not that much on this end, a little more on this side. 
So, so we have one 18 millimeter uh, nut that has to come off. This is a 12 millimeter, 12 point, okay? Valve train assembly has to come out. Both sides, pull these babies out, take this off. Then we have six injectors we need to pull out after that. Well, even before that, we would have access to the cylinder head bolts, loosen them, but we'll take the injectors out and then we'll loosen all the cylinder head bolts. As we come around towards the cam, the cam's gonna have to be rotated off this large nut on the auxiliary, only pulling towards you and not pushing it away. Otherwise, you would loosen this nut here and you don't wanna do that. So, you get really good leverage when you crank it off that nut there. So, have something cleaned up and laid out with paper towels or cardboard to hold these rockers. And then, come in with two hands, grab here real tight, grab here real tight. Be very careful, get some very good grip around this, and carefully walk down your tire and lay this out on your cardboard or paper towels. Be very careful. Now some of these here, you're gonna have to rotate the cam. So for this one, cam lobe is in the way. Uh, this one is okay. When you do these and they're close to the cam lobe, be very careful. Um, it's definitely a two-hand job. 
so when you're next to the lobe. But if you rotate it enough, you can get even further away. So you'll see this one, this one right here. Got the cam lobe right here, and that's that's too close, so that has to go around. This one is good. That one's good. That one is a no. This one is in the way, so that's it. You just, you know, you might have to rotate the cam uh, one or two times, and that's about it. All the other ones are easier to get to. Uh, I believe the torque spec for these are around 180 foot-pounds of torque when they uh, put this cylinder head on. The newer models uh, are like after 2003 or something like that. So you might want to look it up, but it's it's like 200, 210, I think 220 is the max. But uh, for the older 97, like beyond, before 99, the torque spec is, uh, I believe, 180 foot-pounds of torque. So not sure why that is. Uh, when you torque it to 180, it doesn't really feel like enough. Like, I'd feel a lot more comfortable if I made it 200 or something. But uh, you uh, you do what you want or have your mechanic do what you want. Um, I'm also going to be ordering a, a, a special aftermarket head gasket. Uh, it's, I'll have to find out the name, I'll leave it in the uh, description, but it's supposed to be a lot tougher than just the standard head gasket. It can take more abuse and stuff like that, so I want to put that on, and uh, yeah, I might have to replace the cylinder head. Uh, I'll have to see uh, what's going on after I take all this out. Okay, I've cracked all the cylinder head bolts loose except for one. Uh, that was one hell of a workout. I didn't want to use the impact gun because I'm afraid I was going to strip out these uh, 12 points here. So I did them all with, uh, it's like a three foot uh, ratchet wrench here, torque wrench. Works pretty well. Um, the socket for these was a 5 eighths uh, 12 point socket that fit. So I'm uh, not sure what the metric size is. I believe, uh, you know, the 5 eighths is for this. Metric might be uh, a little too tight. So, anyway, um, so I have one more to go here that I have to break loose. And you can see right here the cam lobe is too close to it, so where the socket would rub. So I'm going to come over here. I got my uh, setup here with the bar, and I will rotate it. And you'll see the cam lobe, it starts to go away. So I'll give it a couple more turns, but now we have a lot more room here. We'll give it a couple more turns. We kind of want this side facing that. And then uh, it's basically a two-hand job. You want to be very careful. You want one hand on top of the ratchet wrench so it doesn't lean in towards the cam. And then your other arm on the other end of this and just pull it. It's it's a good workout for your left arm. So, so that's it. I got to get these babies out. I'll have to buy new cylinder head bolts. You're not supposed to reuse these. Um, I think you could reuse them, but, I mean, that's a little risky. So you could completely waste your time if you try to pull a stunt like that. If anyone uh, wants to leave anything in the comments section about reusing them, let me know. Uh Hey, um, let's see. We got more coming your way. Please uh, like this video and subscribe. Uh, it would really help me out with the algorithm. Um, so we will be uh, pulling the cylinder head off. Uh, as in, uh, basically, I might need a cherry picker to come here and lift it up and pull it out. So unless I can find someone around here with something or figure something out. I'm not really sure I could put a board on the roof and I'm not really sure I could have to, I'd have to have a board coming up here. And I mean, it's, it's, that would be a little sketchy, but if I mounted some kind of piece of metal coming off here, going up and attaching up here, and then I was able to winch it up, but then like what, it's just gonna swing left and right. This thing's like 500 pounds, so. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, it sounds like I'm going to need some kind of, you know, hire some mobile service truck to come by with the winch and, and lift this baby out. And then I'll have to decide if I'm going to reuse it or uh, get a reman head 
or by a used head somewhere uh, and go from there but uh yeah definitely a lot of a lot of head uh pulling uh cylinder liners out checking the uh surface of the engine block to make sure it's true um so a lot ahead uh thanks for watching and more coming this way